Hey, what's up everybody? This is Marin. Welcome back to our course on Beginning Realm on iOS. And in this part of the series, we're going to learn how to read sets of objects, query for objects matching certain criteria, sort those results, and more. Let's get started. This is what the project is going to look like once you have finished working through this video tutorial. The Realm Results class works pretty differently than what you might expect based on experience with other databases. Do you remember from that introduction video that other database APIs use intermediate formats and query languages and so forth? Well, that pretty much locks them into reading a bunch of data from disk and then copying that data over to memory for you to use. That's not only very slow um, uh, and also memory consuming, but the main pain point is that the data once read from disk uh, and copied and duplicated into memory uh, can basically get outdated rather quickly as soon as you uh, write some new changes to the, to the disk. So REM results work as said differently. It's more of a, the results class is more of a viewport towards what data is stored on disk. And so when you query for objects that match certain criteria, Realm does not load any objects in any data, nor does it copy anything into memory from disk. Results actually only provides meta information like the kind of matched objects, for example. And this meta information is always reflects the latest state on disk. So only when you access objects in the result set, then will data be copied from the disk into memory for you to use. But that will always be the latest, freshest uh, version of your data from disk. And finally, results behave pretty much like a built-in Swift collection type, like an array, for example. You can iterate over the results in a for loop, you can access random indexes uh, to get random objects from the collection, and more. Let's see how that looks like. Let's say you want to get all teen users persisted on disk. You call realm objects and provide the type of objects you want to have back. In that case, in the example in the current slide, that's the user class. You filter the collection of all users by providing a NS predicate to the filter method. Now, you can provide a full-fledged NS predicate class or just provide a string um, with a matching predicate uh, syntax. And finally, after you filter the collection of all objects to just the ones you need, you might choose to sort those in a certain order. For example, by um, the age property for the users or by the name and so forth. And again, this code does not load any data from disk into memory. It only creates a result set object, which gives back the number of matched objects. So you can either iterate over the collection or access random indexes, and only then data will be actually copied. Oftentimes, you will uh, choose to um, generate an iterator or use a for loop um, any way you choose to uh, access those objects. Finally, the results class also provides you with few advanced methods. Like in the last example on the current slide, uh, once Realm figures out which are all the message objects matching your NS predicate, you call the sum method uh, on a given uh, property name and Realm will take care to automatically uh, under the hood actually in the engine um, sum the values of all of these properties of the matched message object and just return you uh, the result of that sum. Now enough with the background behind the scenes work. Let's do some code that will actually load some data and show it in the apps UI. First of all, open the profile vcontrol.swift file where you will have the profile vcontroller uh, vcontroller class. We have the stats label and the photo in there, and the photo is already taken care of by the adorable avatars uh, API. And so what we do actually here is call the update UI with the message count, which is by default zero, and that sets the label value in here. What we want to do here is try to use results to load all the messages that are being sent by the current user and then get their count and uh, provide it here in the U update UI method. So let's get started. First, let's create a property that will be our results property. Okay, a couple of things here. 
First of all, you don't have to define this property as private. I just like to use private for the properties that I really don't need to be accessible from other classes. Uh, and second, I have an implicitly unwrapped result type because I'm going to initialize it here in view.load. And if for whatever reason that property is nil later on, I would like the app to rather crash during development time so that I can catch this error on time and not let that silently go into production. So come here to view load and let's load all messages who have been sent by the current user. We're gonna filter them by the name property. It's a little basic, but it's just giving filter a try. First, you grab the instance of Realm on the current thread, like so. Remember, this is not creating a new Realm or creating a new object. If you have already used Realm on that thread, it will just give you a cached instance of it. And second, we fetch the default user for that Realm, which is your default user, the me user. And so let's grab all messages who have been sent by that user. We're using the objects method and we provide the type that we want to have back. But of course, we don't want all objects. We want just the ones sent by our default user. And so here you can just type in filter and we're going to either provide an as predicate object or just the predicate format and all the parameters. This is what we're gonna do right, right here. So we want name equals to a parameter. And the first parameter right away we provide is the user.name. Okay, and so this will give us only back the objects that are having their name properties set to the current user's name. And again, this won't load any data from the disk. It will just find those objects and provide meta information about them. And this is actually everything we need because we don't need the objects itself. We don't need the message object themselves. We just need the count of basically what this result has matched. And so we can just go straight away to view will appear here and replace the zero with send messages dot count. And this should already power up our UID controller. Run the project and let's observe what shows up. Okay, come here and then we see one send messages. Amazing, okay. So let's have a look again here. I'm gonna write another message in here Let's say this is my second message, like so. And now it's added to the realm file. And notice that now that in profile view control in view will appear, we're updating the label. As soon as I switch to the profile tab view controller, I see two sent messages. Now, notice I didn't have to reload or fetch again some data. I didn't have to do anything about sent messages at all. This is what we are saying that Realm provides you with live objects. All the data that you're working with is always the most current one. Is you go to other tabs and say, add more messages. Every time view controller, view will appear in the profile view control will update with the latest count without you needing to reload or refresh and so forth. Okay, let's quickly try that also in the feed tab view controller. So come to a feed table view controller, sorry. So come here and let's do something similar. Here we have a table view. Of course, it's the feed. We have a table view. It's a custom UI table view controller class. And so here we have messages, which is an array of message objects. And we have already, if you scroll down, there is the two methods that are required to implement to power up your table view. And those table view methods look really, really basic. If you've ever done a table view controller in any app, you will see how easy they are. They just get the count of the messages array and that's the rows that you're gonna have in your table view. And then in the uh, table view self row at index path, you are getting the object for the current row and then configuring your table cell with that object. And so, this is actually already compiling and working. The problem is that this array is empty. And in fact, you don't really want an array at all because instead of an array, you're going to use a results type. Just come here, remove the type, actually remove also the equal sign, and let's define this as messages will be a results. 
of message objects. Pretty much the same you did in your, in your profile view controller. Okay, and now if you build the code, you will see that you have no errors at all. You've changed messages from an array to results, but you have no errors. Well, because all the things you use messages for is to get the count and results an array has a count property and also to access the current object for the current table row, which is as well implemented in the results class as well. So nothing to change in those methods at all. The only thing you need to do is to define uh, which messages you want to load in here and actually load them. Let's say here from view to load will be a good place to do that. So similarly to what you did in the profile view control, you can come here and just fetch the messages you want to show. Now this time you also want to sort them because it's a visual list, people will see things and they will expect of course the latest messages to be on top. And so after you grab the objects you want to, what you want to have, you can call sort it on that result. Now I'm putting this on a new line because otherwise it will get quite long, but of course what we are writing is basically calling these methods one after the other on the result of the previous method. Okay, now we're gonna, we're gonna sort them by their timestamp property. Remember, that's the automatic timestamp that is provided for your message class. And we want not to be ascending, so we want the latest on top. Okay, so false in here. Okay, that is everything you need to do in that view controller. Just define the results, define which messages you wanna have, and the two simple methods that will power your table view. You can run the app and now if we switch to the Realm browser, we will see there's a lot of messages already created. And actually when you, we uh, fire up the simulator, we'll see that everything is working out just fine. Now by just fine, I mean not exactly well, <laughs> but we see that all these rows are already created. So that means that our table view code is working. Now what is missing of course is the code in the configure with message. So we can come in here and uncomment everything like so. In case you didn't do this in the challenge for the first video, now is a good time to do it. If you run again, now if you did this in the challenge, you would have seen all the cells in there right away. I didn't, so uh, let me fire up again the simulator. And now there are all the messages with the messages from the from the realm file and these are all the adorable avatars that uh, the app is fetching from internet. Now the next quick thing we can do is to attach some code to that heart button in here and actually toggle the is favorite flag on the messages. In fact while you're in feed table view cell.swift in here toggle like is empty so all we need to do is say message toggle favorite. So how does that work? Well, message is the message object that we assigned to the table cell and toggle favorite. If you remember two episodes ago, here's the code in there that we wrote that was, uh, it just says is favorite to not is favorite. It just basically toggles is favorite. And that will update the object on disk. And right now you also might wanna do a quick UI update as well, so. Like button is the outlet to the heart button in there. And then we just toggling the is selected property on it. And so that's everything basically, updating the object on disk, updating the UI, we're done. So let's quickly run the app. So whenever I click on a heart button in here, that will call toggle like, it will toggle the is favorite flag on the realm object on disk. And that will then update the like button itself. Ta-da! There it is. I kind of knew it's gonna happen, but it's still nice to see it working. And so if we switch to the Realm browser, we can see that some of those should have, there it is. So is favorite is checked for those objects. And as we, you know, kind of like favorite more objects, you can see that the check marks are showing here in that column as well. Live, real time, thank you Realm browser app. That's it for this video tutorial. Uh, and now we have a challenge waiting for you. Your challenge for this video is to apply your new results type knowledge uh, to the favorites tab 
TV controller. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.